All right, that worked good. Hi, welcome to Dave's Corner of the World. Have a great day. Oh, gosh, I didn't see you guys standing over there. Well, let me show you what I'm doing. This is going to be a part of my Harley trailer hitch. I'm going to build a trailer hitch and then build a trailer to go behind it. So let's go show you how this is going to work. This piece I'm not going to use for the, for the clear around. I'm going to have one piece continue of right from this point down here like this and all the way around and up to the same point on the other side. This is one quarter, actually this piece is one quarter by one quarter by one sixteenth wall. I've got some one eighth wall that I'm going to use for most of it. This piece however, you like you say there's going to be a piece go down here like so. So it'll come to about here and add another piece come down like this to weld onto this piece. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I've got an idea on how to make this, how to flatten this out, make it look real good, drill a hole in it, and then I can put whatever angle I want to on it. I'm going to have to try to determine how high my trailer hitch is going to be right here. That'll that determines, you know, how wide it is here. But, but like I say, I'm going to have one piece go clear around. No, no breaks on the outside whatsoever. I'm going to have to cut on the inside so I can bend it. I don't have a torch anymore. I don't have any equipment hardly at all. But I can cut little slices in it and bend it and bend it right around and then weld it up when I get it bent just exactly the way I want it. So that's the, uh, that's what we're going to try to accomplish today. I'm going to, rather than use my good piece of steel first, I'm going to try to, I'll show you what I'm doing when we get back over on the table and how I'm going to do this. So anyway, back to the table. All right, now that we're back at the table, kind of explain to you kind of what's going on here. I'm going to take grinder, cut right along here on an angle down and cut along there on both sides. And that way I can pound this top piece right down and have it flat right there, have it a quarter inch thick right there so I can put a bolt, uh, drill a hole and put a bolt through it and weld it all up solid and there'll be no weld joints on it on the top or the bottom. So my numbers are, let me see, three and a quarter on top, well let me put a, a line up here, because I need to cut, and that's going to make a long line, doesn't make any difference how long it is to begin with. same space over here okay now we'll do three and a quarter on top yep one two three and a quarter that's right here and on the bottom is one and three quarters. So I need one and three quarters. That's right there. Now what I'm going to do take and draw a line between here and there. Now what I've got is I'll cut with my grinder, cut along here, along there, and cut that top out. 
or cut this angle. Do the same thing on the other side. Then this top piece should be pretty easy to bend down right down along there and, and on out. And I only want about an inch of space up here. But I, I came back an inch and three quarters, so that gives me a little bit of leeway so I can round it down, I can cut it off, I can do whatever I need to because obviously this piece is going to be a little bit shorter because we're going downhill and then straight out. So we're going to see how this works. Oh, I'm going to do the other side. <clears throat> okay, make sure I do it right because my luck I'll have the angles going the wrong direction on one of them. So make sure I get it right. Let's see, so this is the tall side, okay, so I need my, what was it, three and, three and a quarter, wasn't that right, on this side, now one, two, three, and a quarter, and over here is one and three quarters, I got one and three quarters, Right there. You know, we're not dealing with rocket science here, so if I'm off a sixteenth of an inch or even an eighth of an inch, it won't make that much difference. But I like to be as close as I can. That way the finished product will look as best as we can make it. Alright, let's see. The high point is here. The high point is here. Something just doesn't look quite right. That's because I made it one and a half. I told you guys to make sure I didn't mess up. Doggone. And you let me do one and a half instead of one and three quarters. Okay. Now we're doing this all over again. One, two, three, and a quarter. That's still right here. That one, that mark hasn't moved. All right. I'm going to do this at one and three quarters. Three quarters is right there. All right. It would have. We could have made it work on that other one, but it wouldn't have looked quite right. There we go. That looks better to me. One and three quarters. Three and a quarter. All right. Good deal. Now, all we got to do is chop it out of there. Pardon me while I put on some earplugs because this little grinder is pretty noisy as you will hear in a minute. I never do any grinding without earplugs, or hardly ever, especially not this much. And I'm going to want a pair of gloves on too. I've already taken my watch off. I've got over the last, I've had that particular watch for literally 25 years. And uh, I've got a lot of uh, sparks burned into the uh, 
crystal of it, so I don't want to take it off anymore. A bit more grinding on him. As you can see, I should just be able to pound that down and and weld it right along that seam on both sides and uh, round the corners. And it should be just right. I don't want to pound on the table. But after all, it's just concrete. So we'll see what happens here. Wish me luck. there. I'll do a hot tack out here. I'm impressed with that. That's just going to work really, really nice. Good deal. Oh, I mentioned I was going to use a hot tack. What that is, is I can just tack it, just, just with the welder go, and have this right on something hard, and smack it, and it'll draw those pieces of metal right up together, right perfect right there. So, when somebody says they're going to use a hot tack, that's what they're talking about. Oh, yeah. I'm happy with this. Well, that's just as good as you're going to get it. I am so happy with this. All right. Now we got to get a welder. Okay, kind of making a little funny noises there, but this is so thin it's going to be 100% welded. So we're all right.
Okay. Boy, oh, I'm happy. I am really, really happy with this job so far. Almost done. I am impressed with that. Look at there. That is nice. Uh, just touch up just right there. Just a little. Well, it's not perfectly across right here, but you know what? It is good enough. Now what I'll do is I'll come out come and drill a hole right about here somewhere. I think it's going to be a 3 8 hole, I think. Nope, that's too big. How about 5 16 Yep. I'm going to drill a 5 16 hole right in there. And after I get that drilled, then I can round all this off, cut, you know, cut it off and smooth it up. And I'll have to weld again a little bit there. But by gosh, I'm impressed with this. This is going to work out nice. Okay, now you always put lots of oil on it, or at least I do, because for two reasons. One, I'm using cheap Harbor Freight drill bits, and two, a cheap Harbor Freight drill press. Uh-oh, I guess I need to plug it in. I don't know where it is. Here it is. Just plug it in this way. That'll make it work. Alright. I go real slow. Make sure I got 
lots of oil on it. Hi guys. Hey, I started without you this morning. <clears throat> but I'll catch you guys up real quick. What I've been doing is just taking a big grinder and slicing through here. I'll show you why. With a slice like this, you can we can bend it. I don't want to bend it because I don't want to deform it. I've already bent it once. You might be able to see a little bit of deformity right there. But we can bend it and it'll bend around a corner. And of course that's what I need to do. I need to go uh, around my wheel, back wheel on the motorcycle, and come up to the other side. So I figure I'm going to have to go this far with my slices. And uh, then I'll go test it on the motorcycle. And if that's not quite right, we'll come back and do a little bit more until we get it right. This might be kind of a slow process, but I'm not going to show you the whole thing. I'll just show you a couple of cuts, what we're doing. And the reason for the square is so I can hopefully hold the saw kind of halfway square with the with the uh, piece of square tubing. I've already put my earplugs in, so here we go. You guys better put your earplugs in too. I've got my earplugs in, but I don't have any face protection. I don't get a whole lot of sparks up around my face, but uh, this will eliminate almost all the sparks getting up around my neck or on my head, face, anywhere. Now right, we'll try this again.
Okay, <clears throat> I've got eight inches cut. I think I'm going to have to go another inch, but I don't want to until I find out for sure. So, tell you what, I'm going to uh, take you guys around back over that way their motorcycle is, and then I'll bring this out. There's not a whole lot of room between the fender, between this bolt and the, the tire. There, I got it on. It doesn't need to be tight, just so it'll hold it or I can bend it. It won't pop out like it did before. All right. I'm anxious to see how this works, boys and girls. I really want it to work good. It is just bending right around there, just great. Yeah, but I'm going to have to go another inch to an inch and a half. Well, as you can see, I've done quite a bit. It's taken a long time. I've got a whole lot of cuts in here. And, uh, oh, I'm on the wrong end. From here to here is about the right length. And I think I'm going to have to make two more cuts. I determined from here to here needed to be nine inches from where this bolt bolts in to where this one will bolt in. It needs to be nine inches. So I found a bucket. I was real close to nine inches across. Yeah, it's eight and three quarters across. So I just had to kind of fit it and go around and fit it and go around and fit it and go around and I think I need to make two more slices. I think I'll be done. So I'm anxious to get this job, uh, get the cutting done tonight. And then we'll go from there tomorrow. It's been a long day. Here we go. Next to the last cut. My second cut in there, that should be all I need. Now, just a little bit of fine tuning over here. That's going to work just fine. 
just fine. As you can see, I put a whole lot of slices in there. I got way ahead of you, but this project was taking a really long time and I didn't want to make this a two-parter, so I determined, I, as you can see, I got a pretty nice radius around here by take my grinder and slicing. There's 55 slices between here and here. And each one took between 30 and 45 seconds to cut. So I did a lot of uh, a lot of grinding yesterday. I determined that there was a right at 9 inches from where it bolts on this side of the motorcycle to this side of the motorcycle. So I cut me two 9 inch two by fours, put this together, made this as nice as I could. It's not absolutely perfect, but it will be when we get done. I'll touch up grinding just a little bit around there and on the other side. And I'm just going to leave it just exactly the way it is and weld all these pieces up. I might show you a couple of those. Well, I started without you again. Sorry about that. I think you guys were off to lunch somewhere, so I started without you. I started over here and then over here and then out in the middle somewhere. I'm going to try to keep it from warping too much. So that's why I'm doing a little bit on this side, a little bit on that side, and a little bit up front. So here we go. pretty good. We'll do another one over here somewhere. Almost got that one too hot. It almost melted there on me a little bit. Today is welding day. As you can see, I got them all welded up. There's 55 slices there. There's 55 beads. All the way around. Just on this top side. I don't have anything done on the other side or the inside. As you see, I just clamped them together with two 2x4s. That's holding it just fine. All right, now I gotta do is grind it. As you can see, it's going to take a long time to grind that down. So you guys don't need to watch me do all that. I'll bring you back when I get this side done and then we'll weld up the other side. All welded up next day I spent quite a bit of time on this I've got it ground down pretty fair but when I rub across it like this I can still feel a little bit of imperfections so what I'm going to try doing is I got some 80 grit sandpaper just went to Home Depot and got it just a few minutes ago and I'm going to try to you know, kind of sand down around here and around the outside and, and make it look and, and feel just a little bit better. So, I don't know how much good I'm going to do, but we're going to sit right down here and try it.
that ought to make it flat if it'll sand. I don't know if it'll sand or not. If I have scratches going the same direction as my sandpaper is going, I know I've got it flat. Right now I see a little high spot right there and a little high spot right... No, that's not it. But anyway, we'll work on this a little while and see if I can get it a little bit better than it is. There's definitely a high spot there and there. Maybe a little bit there. I don't know. This is a lot of work. Yeah, I can see a lot of the... Uh, grinder marks coming out so I'm doing all right I'm gonna keep going all right well I'm not gonna make you guys watch anymore you can see it's shining up right there really nicely it's just doing a guy a nice job we'll see you after a while well, I spent about 45 minutes sanding on this thing by hand. And it's not perfect. But after we get some paint spread on it, I think it will be just fine. A few little bitty tiny 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 imperfections, but uh, I think it'll be okay. Next thing is finish welding this out. Make it look like this one over here. I've got this other one welded up. Sanded down, this one sanded down now. See, this one has a hole in it. That's hot. It has a hole in it there. This one does not. Well, I need to make the hole straight across. If I don't, the thing won't be right on the motorcycle. Now, how am I going to do that? Well, need a framing square the inside mark here is right on two inches okay we're going to put this the center of that hole right on two inches hard to see sorry guys I'm going to take a, uh-oh, need to move this out just a little bit. Take a speed square, set in there like that, where it just meets, right there. I haven't moved this, this is still center. Now I can move my framing square very gently. Put pressure back on this. With a real fine mark. That's where we need to be. All I have to do is mark and drill a hole right there and I'll be done with this part of it. I've got it on the motorcycle. It's just bolted up here for right now. I'm going to take this piece remove this bolt put it there weld it on that way the hitch can't come up and down 
Like I say, the hitch is on the motorcycle. Uh, I'm pleased with the way it turned out, but I don't like it. Can't really tell in, the, in this video, but it just looks gigantic. Here's the best way to look at it. And of course, I'm going to have to have a plate come out here with a ball right here. The top of the ball is going to be about this high. So I can't put it back in any further. It'll. If you remember a couple of months ago, I got rear ended. I haven't got that fixed yet. But anyway, I can't have the ball back that much further because this will get broken every time I hook it up. So, uh, anyway, it's, it just looks gigantic. There's not much I can do about it. But it's going to be real easy to put on and take off. All I have to do is just these four bolts. This one and this one and two to match on the other side and then it'll come right off. So it's not going to have to be on there very much. I have my pieces cut, bolted in. Now all I need to do is put a really good tack here and a really good tack there. And the same on the other side. Take it off and weld it up. Sand it down, paint it, and be done. I'm almost done with the trailer hitch for the Harley. These are the two mounting brackets. They're level on the motorcycle and I got them level setting right here. So that's the angle. It's going to come down. Trailer hitch. I need to put this 3 8 inch plate in here. See I got a couple marks. One here and one here. I'm going to cut this one off entirely. And I'm going to cut that down and and widen it out real wide and, and bend it up and weld it back solid 100%. reason why I got to bend it up like that is you can see down here there's quite an angle. And so I've got to get that bent up like that to where it'll weld flat. So when I get that done, then of course I got to drill a hole right about here. Put my two inch ball on there and then cut it off somewhere around here. Make it nice and, and uh, pretty. And then I'll squirt some paint on it. And I'll call this job done. I have my 3 8 inch piece cut and bent. You see I just cut a slice in it. And I bent it up. So it just fits in there just fine. That angle you can see just fits perfectly. The only thing is, it's a little bit too long in here. I'm going to have to mark and cut that out so I can put another piece in there and weld them up solid. So that'll be my next trick. I've just got this piece sitting here, it's not welded at all. It's curved, it's bent up, and it's got that deep gouge in it. First thing I'm going to have to do is weld that up 100% weld. That way it'll be as strong as the original piece. After I do that, grind it off and make it look halfway nice. Put it back in here. Put it where it's supposed to go and tack it. Just just tack it in there. As you can see, that's not where it's supposed to go. It's supposed to go something like that. Right in there somewhere. Okay. This is the size hole I want to put through there. Now, how many of these little drill bits am I going to use, you know, do one a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger than this one. This is extremely important. 
I'm only going to use one. This one right here. Let me get you up here close. Real close. Why only one? It's real hard to see. But if you make it any bigger than the distance between here and here, for instance, if you go up to something like this, right there and right here, it's going to chip the bit. It's going to chip the, the drill bit right here. And then it'll be no good. So you never want to do more than that big. And that's hard to see, but that's the way it is. fast rotation but it's the slowest speed I got on this drill press As you can see, it just went through there like butter. Well, the paint's not dry. It's dry to the touch. Oh, did you hear that thunder? All right. Anyway, it's dry to the touch, so I bolted it on there. We'll go over and take a closer look at it. It's bolted right here. You see, that's one of those sweeping pieces that I made. We came back here and just put a thin strap down there, welded up all four sides. Came around. There's the trailer hitch. One thing I forgot that's easy to fix, and that's the uh, uh, safety chain. I'll just drill like a 3 8 hole through here and put a long bolt up there and bolt it in and put a couple of washers on there and put a safety chain right on there like that. Well, it's not quite as bad as I thought it was going to be. Take a look at it from the side. That's not too bad. I might even end up leaving it on there. I don't know. This job is done. Please subscribe. Hit the bell to get notified every time I post a new video.